Welcome to Mental Health is Health, our community conversation today. CBS News Colorado and MTV are partnering with one goal to improve the mental health of everyone in our community. We are excited to bring together some of our state's leading experts on this topic to dig a little deeper into the behavioral health issues that are affecting so many of us Coloradans. Joining us is Behavioral Health Commissioner for the state of Colorado, Dr. Morgan Medlock. Dr. Medlock, thanks for being with us. Of course, thank you. The Chief of Mental Health at Children's Hospital, Colorado Dr. Ron Lee Liao. Thank you so much, Doctor, for being with us. It's a pleasure to be here. And Steve Hayden, who is with Envision U, a nonprofit focused on improving behavioral health for Colorado's LGBTQ plus community. We really appreciate each and every one of you for being with us and spending this really important time. Thank you all. So doc, Dr. Medlock, we wanna begin with you. You will be heading up the new Behavioral Health Administration. It's one of the most ambitious efforts to reform the delivery of mental health in our state's history. You've said that people really need a front door to access care. So how does that happen? Explain that to us. Absolutely, well, I am extremely excited to be the first Behavioral Health Administration Commissioner for the state of Colorado. This is certainly a historic moment and one of the things that the Behavioral Health Task Force, which actually made the recommendation to Governor Polis that an administration be established, one of the first things that they thought was critical is that we establish a, a front door to treatment. And specifically that we think about that in terms of expanding and uh, building upon our crisis services system. So when we think about an expanded front door, we have done a lot this legislative session to ensure that when the people of Colorado need help and need help in an urgent way, that they're able to get the care they need. Uh, some of the bills we've been able to get through this session are, are really historic in that they ensure that youth who are in crisis are able to be seen in our crisis system. They ensure that individuals uh, that are experiencing substance use disorder crises are able to be seen, that they don't have to go through a different front door than a person that's experiencing a mental health uh, challenge and also individuals with disabilities. We clarified this le legislative session uh, that all of our crisis centers should be equipped to serve those that may be experiencing uh, a disability. So this is, this is really a historic moment for Colorado to build a crisis services center uh, that is able to uh, really meet people where they are and also connect them uh, to the continuum of care. Yes, yeah, so Dr. Medlock, like, this is so important as we move forward. As we move forward with all of this, you have to have that access, right? People have to know where to go and that there is a place to go to that will allow them um, to, to get the help that they need. Absolutely. That's right. And so one of the things that, that we are uh, also looking at is that we are uh, know that we have to combine uh, the uh, front doors to our walk-in centers, our, our crisis services centers across the state with digital solutions as well. And so I uh, look forward to talking with you a little later in the broadcast about our new care directory uh, that we will be launching the first month of our administration in July, uh, 2022. Very exciting. Yeah, that's awesome. That's wonderful, wonderful news. Mr. Hayden, your organization recently released a state of the state report on the concerns and the experiences of LGBTQ plus individuals. What stood out to you the most in that report? And were you surprised by what stood out to you? First, the first question. Sure, thanks so much, Karen. Um, yeah, I really appreciate the opportunity to talk about the mental health and wellness of the LGBTQ community. And you know, it's important to note that there isn't an inherently a, a greater risk for members of the LGBTQ community in experiencing mental or emotional health concerns, but given stigma, discrimination, uh, pervasive trauma in the community, we do see higher rates of mental, poor mental health outcomes and often less access to affirming care. And so across the board, the statistics all altogether not surprising and they mirror those that we see nationally. A couple that I think stood out for us is about a third of the community um, in Colorado has experienced disordered eating, which is one of the leading causes of death among LGBTQ folks high numbers of folks um, with extensive trauma in their youth. And what we know is those adverse childhood experiences is the number of those increase, the risk of chronic physical health, mental and emotional health concerns go up uh, pretty dramatically 
We also see a community that's struggling with substance use. And so uh, when I think about uh, my friends and family who identify as part of the community, finding those safe spaces to connect and form meaningful relationships uh, in places that don't have uh, a real focus on, um, on alcohol use. And so that's, that's an ongoing struggle for the community. And the last thing I'll point out is that um, you know, loneliness continues to be a pretty significant problem in the community. And I know this year, Mental Health Action Day is, is really focused on building connection. And that's something that Envision You that we're really committed uh, to undertaking is building programs that are inclusive and supportive to building meaningful connections uh, for folks in our uh, Colorado's LGBTQ community. Stephen, thank you so much for that. I appreciate it. Dr. Lau, I want to uh, talk to you a little bit about this. I know last May, Children's Hospital Colorado had declared a state of emergency in youth mental health. It was the first in a 117-year history of the hospital system. Pediatric emergency departments, inpatient units we know were overrun with kids that were showing up and they were attempting suicide and suffering from all kinds of forms of major mental health illness. Dr. Lau, a year later, the numbers are really going up with children seeing double the number of the mental health um, patients that are coming in there. How do you handle this? Do you, and, and do you have the staff in order to, to take this on? Yeah, th thanks so much, Karen, for pointing out sort of the, the youth mental health needs of our state. Um, it is still a mental health crisis. And, and I actually joined the Children's Hospital team uh, in September of last year. Um, when the, uh, right before the National Pediatric Youth uh, Mental Health Crisis was declared uh, by the American Academy of Pediatrics, American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry, and the Children's Hospital Association. As you mentioned, we, we have been seeing double the amount of kids still uh, from our 2019 dates and, and numbers. Um, in our emergency departments on any given day, half of our trauma beds actually are taken up uh, with kids who are really in crisis with their families who have may have attempted suicide or have very serious plans or thoughts about harming themselves. Also other conditions, as Steve mentioned, eating disorders, addiction, substance use, depression, anxiety, um, autism, the whole nine yards uh, we're seeing still at, at record levels in our emergency rooms, but also across our continuum of care. Wait lists for outpatient uh, therapy and assessments, as well as for inpatient hospital beds, as well as for our partial hospital program and our school-based uh, programs as well. So we're still seeing record numbers and, and a crisis level of care and a, and a huge workforce shortage. And I think uh, Dr. Metlock and Steve probably can agree with us on this. I think across our mental health system in Colorado and really around the country, we saw a huge turnover in our mental health workforce, um, as well as sort of shortages in the pipelines. Dr. Liao, I want to talk more about all those things coming up here in just a few minutes. We're going to go to a, a quick break. We'll be right back with more of our community conversation, Mental Health is Health. Welcome back to our community conversation on Mental Health is Health. We so appreciate each and every one of you for being here with us today. We're highlighting how mental health is so important. We're talking to Behavioral Health Commissioner for the State of Colorado, Dr. Morgan Medlock the Chief of Mental Health at Children's Hospital Colorado, Dr. Ron Lee Liao, and Steve Hayden, who is with Envision You, a nonprofit that focuses on improving behavioral health for Colorado's LGBTQ plus community. We are so grateful to have each and every one of you with us today talking about mental health, so important and really uh, something that we should all be talking about with our families and our neighbors and certainly our communities that we're inside with. So we appreciate it appreciate your time for sure. Uh, Steve, let's start with you a little bit. Let's talk about the workforce um, component right now, what you need as we move forward, um, your access to, to more employees and what you want that employee pool to look for and why it's important. And so in terms of uh, the workforce to meet the needs of, of all Coloradoans, including those that identify as LGBTQ+, uh, the first thing is making sure that our providers have the requisite training to deliver that affirming and culturally relevant care. So at Envision U, we have a comprehensive training program to make sure that our provider networks can deliver high quality care. The second piece is expanding the workforce. So what we've seen is a pretty significant attrition rate in the field and a lower uh, uh, 
lower enrollments in graduate school programs uh, for folks seeking uh, careers in, as a mental health professional. So what can we do to increase interest um, in folks pursuing um, this, this career? And then the other piece, which is really vital, is that we have a diverse uh, workforce, one that represents and, and, and looks like the people that we serve, live in communities, um, understand the unique challenges that communities of color, members of the LGBTQ plus community, indigenous folks and others who are often um, have, have greater needs and, and less access to care. So I know at Envision U, we've been involved in some of the workforce development efforts underway at the state of Colorado and look forward to continuing to partner with our state leaders to ensure that we have a uh, diverse workforce. Let's get over to Dr. How, how things stay um, with within your own workforce and what areas you need to, to build on? Yes, as Steve mentioned, we've had probably 30 plus percent turnover in the mental health workforce and that's nationwide. And so we've really made a concerted effort in, in really investing in our pathway programs. So from our nursing uh, pathway programs to our master's clinician pathway programs, including peer support specialists. So these are families or youth with lived experience of mental health challenges, um, which we're building a certification program so that they can also join a community mental health workforce. And I think that's where, when you have 30% workforce turnover in a whole field, it, it really gives us the opportunity to recruit from places uh, that we uh, traditionally wouldn't look and, and create something like a mental health service course. So folks in the local community can really think about meaningful careers to develop um, in and have mentorship and supervision and coaching and support in a, in a peer group as well. So we're looking at lots of incentives through Children's Hospital Colorado, as well as the CU Anschutz Health Sciences Campus to partner with community colleges through pre-K to 12 education to think about early like pre-K to career pathways in mental health, um, engaging the whole family, whole school communities as well. Thank you so much, Dr. Medlock. I want to ask you too. I know that you that you are. Uh, this is this is top on your radar, of course, as far as having a workforce um, committee and administration here to to push these efforts forward. What does that look like for you and your department? Absolutely, workforce is is one of our six pillars of transformation uh, within the behavioral health administration, and we are actually speaking to both issues that have been raised by my colleagues today in terms of training. The Behavioral Health Administration will be launching a learning management system that all providers across the state can utilize uh, to access training in uh, equity, uh, cultural humility, uh, and other topics that are critical uh, for serving Coloradans in the way they deserve. Um, in terms of actually building the pipeline, we also have dollars that have been allocated this legislative session to help us do just that. And I'm excited that as a first step towards our workforce development strategy, we have actually hired a workforce development policy officer uh, and this executive will be joining our administration in mid-June uh, and will be responsible for releasing our workforce development strategy by September 1. That's fantastic. Dr. Medlock, thank you so much for that. We have about a minute and a half, two minutes here and, and quickly I just wanted to go through each of you and just ask you, you know, as as, um, as just a part of the community, as a neighbor, as a mom, as, an, as a friend and family and, and someone that loves the community, how can we um, Colorons as a whole, how can we help in this process? Uh, Dr. Medlock, I'll start with you. How do we help out and how do we start this conversation? Well, I am most excited about the advisory council, the lived experience council that will really drive the co-creation of an equitable, accountable, and effective behavioral health system in Colorado. Uh, I wrote an op-ed earlier this month that includes um, a link to how to apply for the advisory council. Um, and so encourage everyone uh, to uh, look on the human services website, uh, look for the BHA advisory council, and you will see the application there on how to join our council. We hope that a majority of individuals with lived experience, including family members, or those who have uh, themselves had mental health challenges and needed to access services, uh, that you will join uh, this really critical council, help us create the ideal system. That's fantastic, Dr. Medlock, thank you. Dr. Liao, um, you next, if you don't mind, just share with us how, how we can start that conversation with our youth. Yeah, I, Karen, I always wear two hats. So one is a child psychiatrist, another is a, a parent. And I think it's been a really long three years uh, through the COVID pandemic. And, and we saw the mental health 
sort of rising rates um, and levels of crises even before. Um, I think one of the first things to do also is just to remember to take care of, of, of yourself and, and look around at the children because all the children in Colorado are, are part of our larger family in the state. And I think when uh, we've been so isolated, as Stephen has mentioned, there's really been, I mean, it's been a, it's a really, been a really very challenging time. The people that you would have turned to usually, um, you know, we, we've had to social distance and, and been disconnected from. Um, we have a whole host of uh, parent resources on our Children's Hospital website, as well as advocacy um, and tips and guidance too, if you wanna work um, to advocate at your local or state and community levels or at the national level for uh, a more robust uh, investment in children's mental health. So I think the first thing is just to take a, take a collective breath, you know, enjoy this end of the school year if we can as parents and family members and, and physicians and healthcare workers and mental health care folks, yeah. uh, because Talk it's been a long haul. So. It sure has. Dr. Liao, thank you so much. We appreciate all of you being with us. Doctors Medlock, Liao, Mr. Hayden, for sharing your insights with us today. We appreciate your time and your dedication. And to access more resources, we sure hope you'll visit cbsdenver.com. Find the Mental Health is Health section on there. Once you get there, you'll see stories about how groups in our community are helping others thrive. You're watching CBS News Colorado, your top stories and weather coming up next.